Months ago, Atomic Heart released the trailers for their second DLC, Trapped in Limbo, and immediately people recognized these were surf ramps, like CSGO Surf, but no clips of the actual gameplay. And last week that DLC launched, so I had to know, would Atomic Heart Surf feel like the original or some horrible abomination? So I coughed up $45, and thankfully we can skip the entire main game. So I got right into it. Off the bat, it gives you a mini tutorial for surf. The graphic tells you to make a curve. I give the same advice in my own tutorial, so I thought it was fine. And more text below that was kind of cryptic. Stay calm and watch your angle, you'll soar up high, not dangle. Okay. But oh boy, I took a look and yep, they tried to make surf. But first, I had to try the bunny hopping. B hop is a mechanic in CS that's very important for surf, and it was fine. You can rebind jump to your scroll wheel down to chain jumps and keep some speed, but not much. And now for the actual surf. So I took my first jump and okay, so far so good. I could adjust my height on the ramp by moving left and right, and it felt pretty smooth. So far, so good. And there were some collectibles. This turned out to be the economy of Limbo, as well as some spikes on the ramps that reset you. And oh man, it did look good. It looked good. But then some weird stuff happened. Atomic Heart Surf has some interesting mechanics, like the ramp instantly gives you speed as soon as you land. Even if you're at a dead stop, you can get right up and keep going. And something was definitely off about the ramps, we'll get into this later. But eventually, I made it to the first checkpoint. These were like the stages of the map in surf terms. I also wanted to know if I could use my surf skills to jump to unintended islands or break the game. However, they either had no collision or were completely blocked off. I was able to hit a checkpoint trigger without actually landing, which was cool, but that was about it. So how does Limbo actually work? What are the game mechanics? In between each of the stages, there are islands with save points. You go to these yellow chests to get your weapons and abilities, and the price increases as you go along. And on some islands, there are bosses that you have to kill, you can't skip them, I tried, or other challenges like King of the Hill that also escalated in difficulty as the level progressed. There's also gold coins that most of are only collectible after hard surf sections, but they're only for cosmetics and weapon skins. But you do spend most of the level actually surfing. These sections are, for the most part, the only way to progress through each map. And as a result, the developers had to make the surf really easy and accessible, so people weren't stuck between the actual combats. So how did they do this? Well, first, they give you a speed boost on every single ramp. In regular surf, your landings are really important. If you aren't smooth and flush with the ramp, you lose all your speed. But in Atomic Heart, you can completely slam and just keep going. This is why we can climb up in unnatural but convenient ways that would be impossible in CS. Second, they make it really hard to throw yourself off the ramp. It all feels kind of sticky and slow. In CS, any decently sized move will send you flying off the ramp which would be really frustrating for Atomic Heart players who just want to play their game. They didn't necessarily come to learn surf from scratch, it's really hard. So instead, you have to do long, slow flicks to get any kind of air, and overall, you're a lot more stable. Conversely, in the air, you can strafe around like crazy. In CS, this would kill all your speed, but I think this was a good design decision and gives new players more freedom. And after an hour of playing, I realized you don't even have to hold any keys. In other versions of Surf, you have to use A and D for all your movements, sometimes to an insanely precise degree. But in Atomic Heart, just turning moves you in the air. The game also caps your speed so that you're not flying off into the ether. But I think you're getting the point. In many ways, Atomic Heart simplified Surf instead of just trying to emulate it. This was an adaptation not a copy. And as I continued to play through the DLC, I kind of got the gimmick. Surf wasn't the only game. Limbo emulated and changed from other games. The entire DLC has a theme. Let me explain. Two levels of the DLC are like the game only up. You climb through vertical sections that you will fail and have to start all over. But there are checkpoints safe zones, and a little more handholding to keep us moving forward, and a lot of really cool sections that you won't see in the original title, interspersed with more combat. 
but I can say with certainty it was fun. There's nothing wrong with making it easier, and it's not supposed to be hardcore KZ or parkour from Counter Strike. It's Atomic Heart, giving its players a taste of these other games, which is hilarious because they also copied Subway Surfers, the other game you tend to find below random clips on TikTok. You move left and right, dodge trains with copious checkpoints and extra lives. However, credit to the devs, they again added their own twists and improvements. You can make micro adjustments, like halfway in a column, halfway up and down. And later they make you combine these movements to clear very tight gaps that you can never get in the original title. They even switch it up, towards the end removing the columns and only allowing you to change your trajectory. An interesting idea. This was a successful remake, even if very short and not really replayable. Yeah, every run is the same. However, there's one more thing I think Munfish took from Counter Strike that's really cool. It might be a stretch, but in the second level, there's this boss. You have to fling little dudes into this giant box, and at one point, it fires out these circles. Huge and do a little damage, but you can jump over them. This instantly reminded me of another mod from Counter-Strike. This is Gris, a map in Zombie Escape Counter-Strike. Notice that this boss is a box. It fires out all kinds of objects, beams of light, and a few vertical circles. And at the very end, big circles on the ground that you have to jump over. Gris is iconic in Zombie Escape and spawned a bunch of copies. There's a chance, since the devs included Surf, they also played this equally famous mod and its maps, a really interesting homage. Or, or maybe it's just nothing. And of course, there's this Duck Hunt minigame, and I'm sure a bunch of other references all throughout. So what is my final verdict? Well, let's start with those who only care about the surf. If you don't own Atomic Heart, is it worth shelling out the $45 and in a few days, $70 plus to surf an Atomic Heart? No. Surf is free in so many ways with thousands of maps, but let's talk about the surf anyway. The developers did create some really cool ideas. There's a loop with head surfs, an advanced idea, and the aesthetic design of the ramps was phenomenal, really engrossing, and a lot of the screen is covered by ramps, so they ought to look good. But for me, gameplay comes first. One thing I would have liked was more freedom around the levels. I tried a bunch of skips, shortcuts through the map, looking for hidden or unintended areas, but the devs blocked them off, maybe for a good reason. I did find this one where you can double back on this ramp to avoid a long loop around, and this other guy found this huge skip where you are going around a long death trigger and all the way below. He was speed running the game already, shout out to that guy, and there were other places for time improvements if you know what you're doing. And at the very end, the hardest part I guess, the ramps suddenly move away, and later move down to catch you, before what looks like a really crazy section. Tiny ramps and one of them rotating, which may also be an homage to Surf. But because of the physics, it's really easy to complete the final stage. Okay, what about the DLC overall? Like as an overall game, I thought it was incredible. After you fight and kill a lot of the geese or ducks, whatever these are, time freezes. And there are these really intricate lighting and reflections. It was mind blowing for me because I'm used to textures made in 2004. And because I'm a surfer and my channel is about surf, it was an absolute joy to play. If you want to see like 30 other surf games from Roblox to Halo, go check out my most viewed video. Goodbye.